You want to understand native speakers easily, but when you're watching television or people are talking to you, it sounds like this. Right? So, in today's lesson, I want to share with you five simple things that you can do to really improve your listening comprehension skills and understand fast speaking natives more easily. Let me remind you that the techniques that you need to develop to improve your listening skills are the same techniques that you need to develop your pronunciation skills and to speak more quickly and naturally. So this video is really a win-win lesson. You're going to improve your listening skills and your pronunciation skills today. And when you've learned these skills that I'm going to talk about today, it's vital that you put them into practice. And that means actually listening to English. And um, one of the best ways to do this is by podcasts or audiobooks. I downloaded a new book by one of my favorite comedians and I listen to it when I'm taking the children to school, when I'm cooking, when I'm driving. So you can do that. You can practice your listening skills without actually finding extra time to do it. Just include it in an activity that you already do. Exercise too. I listen to it when I'm doing exercise. But choose something that is going to make you want to listen and listen again and again and again because creating that routine of listening to some English every day, something that is interesting for you, is a really effective way of improving your listening skills. And while you're doing that, try to implement the five simple ways that I'm going to teach you now of how to improve your listening skills in English. Let's go. Now, if you have ever thought that when native speakers are talking, it sounds like one long sound, that's because we use linking techniques that you probably don't use. And a very, very common one is consonant to consonant linking. So look at these examples here. Calm man white T. In these situations, one word ends with a consonant and the next word begins with the same consonant. And what we do in those situations is we don't pronounce both consonants like this, calm man, white T. But instead, we join the words together with one slightly longer consonant. So it's calm man. Calm man, white tea, white tea. And when we use this technique, simple sentences like this, John knows Sally's seeing Gary, sound like this. John knows Sally's seeing Gary. It sounds like one long word because of all the consonant to consonant linking that native speakers naturally do. So try to do this when you're speaking English, and if you do, it will really help you improve your recognition of words when native speakers are using these techniques with you. Relax. Okay, relaxed pronunciation. Hmm. Some people might call it lazy pronunciation, but it's basically where we take two or three words and we just pronounce them in a much, much more relaxed way. So let me explain this with a few examples. Do you, when we're speaking quickly, do you often becomes j, j. Instead of do you know what I mean, you will normally hear people saying, do you know what I mean? J, 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 do you know what I mean? Want to often becomes wanna. Instead of do you want to go with me? We could say, do you wanna, do you wanna go with me? Going to often becomes gonna. Do you wanna go with me? Now I'm gonna go with her. I'm gonna go with her. Are you sure? Mm, I don't know. Don't know often becomes dunno, dunno. I'm gonna go with her. Are you sure? Dunno. Instead of let me, you will often hear let me. Let me come too. Instead of isn't it, you will often hear in it. 
It's good, isn't it? And when we employ all of these techniques, simple sentences like this, I don't know what you want to do later, can often become this. I don't know what you want to do later. Or instead of, do you want to let me know when you decide what you want to do? We can often say, do you want to let me know when you decide what you want to do? Listen, this is not formal, obviously, but it's something that you will hear native speakers using. And if you're familiar with these, and even if you use them yourself in informal situations, it will help you recognize them and understand them when native speakers are talking to you or when you're watching TV, and that's what we want. We want to understand them easily, and in order to do that, we need to recognize the type of English they use. If a native speaker has the opportunity to use a contraction, like is not becoming isn't, they will normally use that opportunity. Okay, we always want to give the message as quickly as possible, and these contractions exist so that we can speak more quickly. Now, the problem is when we have contractions or double contractions, and I use them to students like you, then often we have a bit of communication breakdown, okay? Because you're not familiar with contractions or more complex contractions that we can often find in English. And I'm talking about things like the contraction of could have in the expression I could have gone. Now, the thing is that the contraction of could have has two possible ways to pronounce it. One is could have, could have, and the other one, we delete the v at the end, coulda, coulda. Again, this is a, an example of a relaxed pronunciation, coulda. So instead of I could have gone, we would normally say I could have gone or I could have gone. And this is the same with should have and would have. I should have gone, I should have gone. I would have gone, I would have gone. Okay, so let's now add a negative to this. Instead of could not have, or would not have, or should not have. There are three different ways to pronounce the contraction of these expressions. So instead of could not have, we can say couldn't have, couldn't have, or couldn't have, couldn't have, or in very relaxed pronunciation and perhaps regional pronunciation, couldn't have, couldn't have, with just uh, at the end, couldn't uh. With would, wouldn't have, wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh. And with should, shouldn't have, shouldn't uh, shouldn't uh. And you will hear these when you're watching TV and speaking to native speakers. I couldn't have gone. I shouldn't have said. I wouldn't have known. Okay, one other contraction that you might have heard is the contraction ain't. Ain't. And ain't is usually a contraction of isn't. Sometimes also aren't, you aren't, you ain't, he isn't, he ain't. Sometimes you might even hear it for I'm not, I ain't, I ain't going, you ain't going, he ain't going. And it all means the negative of to be. Again, this is informal, not everybody uses it. It might be regional, but you will hear it if you're speaking to certain native speakers. So you should be familiar with it. So use these contractions, practice them, use them next time you're speaking to native speakers. See the effect? I'm sure it will be positive. And when you are familiar and comfortable using them, guess what? You're going to understand them much easier when you hear them spoken by native speakers. It's really important for you to know that when you are listening to English, you don't need to understand every word. You don't, and you probably don't in your native language. Now, there are two types of words in English, and let's imagine a brick wall to help us understand this. So, content words are like the bricks in a wall. You need to see them to know that it's a wall. Then structure words, these are little grammar words or little articles, prepositions, pronouns, little blah, grammar words. And they're like the cement in the wall. They make the wall complete and robust. And we know exactly everything about the wall because of the cement, basically. But without the cement, it's still a wall. 
we have walls without cement in Yorkshire. Uh, and basically, those bricks, those content words, are most important parts of a sentence. And if you can focus on understanding those words, you can often guess the rest of the sentence. Sometimes you'll be right, sometimes you'll be wrong, you might get the wrong tense, but you'll understand the general idea of the conversation. You will. Look at these examples. Wife car broken. Take car mechanic tomorrow. Meet weekend. Go cinema. Watch James Bond. No money. You pay. You see, I didn't use any structure words in those sentences, but I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, it sounds simple, but focus on your pronunciation. I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but if you focus on your pronunciation, if you learn some silent letter words, if you learn the typical pronunciation rules, and if you focus on improving your pronunciation, you will recognize the words that native speakers are using correctly. You'll recognize them and it will make understanding them much easier. I remember teaching a student a long time ago the word joring. He knew the word. He'd known the word for years. But I said, joring, joring, joring. And he said, what? And in the end, I had to write it and he said, ah, during, during. It's not during, but he didn't recognize the word because in his mind and for the past 20 years of his life, he thought that that word was pronounced during instead of during. Okay, what I want you to do to start understanding native speakers more easily is this three-step plan. Number one, focus on your pronunciation and use the techniques, the linking techniques, the contractions, and the relaxed pronunciation that I've taught you in this lesson and other videos that I do for you. Number two, listen for this relaxed pronunciation and, and linking and contractions when you're listening to native speakers. And remember, you don't need to understand every word. And number three, start listening a little bit every day to some English and try to listen out for how they link words together, how they use contractions and relaxed pronunciation, and practice getting into the habit of not worrying if you don't understand every word, but trying to get the global understanding by focusing on the content words and not worrying so much about all the little grammar words. There's one lesson that will help you improve your pronunciation in English, so enjoy that and enjoy starting to understand native speakers more easily. Thanks for watching, subscribe, blah, 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 and I'll see you in that video next. Bye for now.